My girlfriend's ex recently passed away. At his funeral, my ex made a speech that made my skin crawl. So, my girlfriend and I have been together for about four years. She used to be close friends with her ex. However, he tried to make a move on her while she and I were together, so she cut off their friendship. They knew each other for about 10 years. They were high school sweethearts and stayed together throughout college. They broke up because he did not want kids. He died recently, and my girlfriend was invited to the funeral. While I wasn't happy, so to speak, to see my girlfriend cry about this guy, I swallowed my emotions and offered my full support. She asked me to come with her. Here is where things get messy. So, she kept talking about how she wishes they never broke up in the first place, and that she's never met someone who she loved as much as him. She made a speech about how she says that if things had been different, they'd have been a happy family with children. I had to force myself not to say anything then. Now we're back home and she hasn't said anything about what she said. I'm so close to just leaving, but I just don't know if she only said that out of grief. And to be clear, she didn't say these things to me, she was talking to others. Update, three days later. Hello everyone, it's been a stressful couple of days and my post got a lot more attention than I expected. It was overwhelming to be honest. It's been a week since the funeral itself and I've been talking to some friends as well as reading comments on my last post. Truth be told, I've been hesitant to talk to my girlfriend about this because she's still been depressed. She's not talking to me at all, and I've been taking care of everything around our place. She's just been laying in our bed. I've tried to talk to her, but she just shuts me out. I've been reflecting on our past relationship and realized a couple of things. My girlfriend was never as passionate with me as she was with her ex. She never did anything as romantic or thoughtful for me when compared to her ex. For example, she's never gone traveling for more than three days with me, but she traveled often with him, sometimes for years. It's not like I haven't offered. I was simply told to get over it, and that each relationship is different, and people say stuff like, if she wanted to be with her ex, she would be. Something also to note is that some of you actually pointed my attention to another post, one that's about a girl going to her ex's funeral. I read the post, and I don't know if it's actually my girlfriend or not. Some details are different, like our age, we're both 30. Also, I never said anything about breaking up with her for going to the funeral. I wasn't exactly happy to see her mourn the guy who wanted to sleep with her while she was with me, but I didn't actually say anything. Now, that post admitted that she actually cheated. I thought about this for a second, but it doesn't matter. Because if she cheated or not, I already broke up with her. I did have a talk with her. She refused to at first by not responding to me. But when I told her I was leaving, she finally said something to me. I basically told her that I feel like crap ever since she said those things at the funeral. How I feel like she would rather be with her ex than me that I felt like her second choice. She started to yell at me, calling me selfish, and that she's lost one of the most important people in her life, and I shouldn't make this about me. I was too tired to yell back. My things were already packed up. I'm staying with my parents for a while. Our lease doesn't expire for a few months, so I don't know what she's planning to do. I don't know what to do now. I thought I was gonna marry this girl someday and have kids, but she wanted someone else all this time. I appreciate all the comments and I don't know if I'm gonna post another update, but thank you. New update, two months later. Hello everyone, I got a lot of support from this subreddit last time and I appreciate it, so I figured I should update you all. It's the day before Valentine's and I had actually planned something for my girlfriend before this whole mess started. I can't help but to think of her. Our shared friend group didn't side against me. They have been supportive to both of us, it seems. I've explained to them why we broke up and they were all pretty understanding. My friend and his girlfriend are friends to both of us and I've asked them about my ex. Apparently, she's been doing good. She's back to work. She took like two weeks off work back then, but besides that, she hasn't been out of the apartment. She hasn't tried to reach me, and I haven't tried to reach her. Our lease expires next month, so I don't know what she's planning to do. She could afford the rent on her own, but she'd be scrapping by. I've been tempted to reach out a lot. I hated breaking up, but I hate even more how we broke up. It feels like I left her behind when she needed me the most. If she reacted like this to anyone else, I'd be there for her, no questions asked. But I know better. I know I'd be resentful because she still wants her ex over me. 
I wanted to thank everyone for the support last time, and I guess this is just me venting. Have we read this story before on this channel? I don't remember. I know I have read this story, but I don't know if I've read it personally. But I do know that the final update I did not read, because I remember this story, and I thought it was a little crazy. Um, well, not crazy, but I mean, I understand where the girlfriend's coming from, and I understand where OP is coming from. And he looked back and realized that she didn't treat me as well as the ex. And even if he didn't pass away, I still think that kind of warrants not wanting to be with her. So I understand he's justified, and I understand that he feels like he left her at, you know, uh, an inopportune time or one of her worst moments. So I, I don't know, because he doesn't feel wanted. So why would he want to console someone who he feels like doesn't want him? You see what I mean? There's a lot of emotions involved here. But what do you guys think? Next story. Story number two, fiance 29F cheated on her bachelorette party. I 32M am struggling to decide the next steps. I'm sorry if this is just a bunch of rambling. I just need a place to write down everything that has happened and hopefully get some advice on what to do next. My fiance 29F and I 32M have been together for about seven years now. We were supposed to get married next month. Before all of this happened, we had no issues with cheating or any big fights. This is the first time anything like this has happened between us. About two weeks ago, my fiance approached me and asked me if I would be open to us having a bachelor's and bachelorette party. This was something that made me really uncomfortable. Personally, I believe that these kinds of parties only serve to encourage infidelity before a couple gets married, and that they aren't something I'd be interested in. I expressed that to my fiancé, but she told me that if we did have them, they'd just be friends hanging out with us celebrating our future wedding, and that we wouldn't have the stereotypical last night of freedom kind of party. After talking for a bit and establishing some boundaries, we agreed to have the parties on the same day which happened to be this past Wednesday. When Wednesday came around, my friends came over to our place for a game of D&D that was supposed to be themed around my character getting married, while my fiancé went out with her friends for a pub crawl. I was having fun with my friends until about roughly three hours into our game, when one of my fiancé and I's mutual friends texted me and told me that we needed to talk. Obviously, I immediately became concerned and asked her what was going on, but she said that she didn't feel comfortable discussing over text and said she'd rather speak to me in person. This really messed me up, and for the next hour, I couldn't really focus on anything else, because I kept wondering what could possibly be so important that she wanted to come over and talk to me. By the time she arrived, my friends and I had already wrapped things up, so I was just waiting for her to come home. She came in and asked for us to sit down and talk, which is when she revealed to me that my fiancé used the party as an opportunity to cheat on me. I immediately felt like Mike Tyson had punched me in the chest. This was exactly what I was afraid of when my fiancé first approached me about having these parties, and she assured me that this was the furthest thing from her mind. Until then, I had no reason not to trust her, so I believed her. I felt so stupid for not seeing this coming. I asked my friend if she was sure of what happened, and she showed me a video of my fiancé kissing some guy at a bar. Apparently, this video was shared in a group chat that my fiancé and her friends were on to plan the party. I honestly don't know how I didn't break down crying when I was showed the video. I felt like I was going to throw up. There was the woman that I was supposed to spend the rest of my life with kissing another man while her friends cheered her on. The next part is my friend's recollection of the events that led up to the cheating, so I don't have a lot of details. Apparently, my fiancé's maid of honor spent the entire night complaining that I wouldn't let them have a traditional bachelorette party and that I was too controlling and jealous. My fiancé didn't push back on any of it and just kept drinking and having her fun. At some point, some of the women noticed that she had been getting attention from some of the men, which is when the maid of honor started to encourage her to flirt. My fiancé gave some weak resistance, but eventually, she gave in and approached one of the guys at the bar. This is where our mutual friend became uncomfortable and left the party early, but she was still in the group chat where the video was shared. I thanked my friend for telling me what happened and asked her to forward me the evidence, along with anything else that might end up being shared with her. After she left was when I finally broke down crying. I then texted my fiancé telling her that I knew the wedding was off. Just a few minutes later, my phone was flooded with text messages from her and her friends. They even tried adding me to the group chat where they shared the video of her kissing the other man. She got home about 30 minutes later. She was crying when she came in and begged me not to call off the wedding. She was telling me that she was drunk and that she doesn't know what came over her. 
She claimed that she didn't do anything other than kissing and that she loved me. I stayed silent through all of her crying, which I think only made her more desperate. She kept saying how sorry she was, how it would never happen again, and how she would cut off all the friends that were at her party. I told her that I didn't want to talk about what happened, and that the wedding was still off. I also told her that she could call her friends over and have the traditional party she obviously wanted so much because I was leaving. This made her even more desperate, and I kid you not, made her try to block the door to prevent me from leaving. I just stayed silent while packing my bag, then called my sister over and asked her if I could stay with her for a couple of days. I have now been at my sister's house for the last few days, calling friends and family to tell them that the wedding is off. I haven't told anyone other than my sister the reason. I just feel so humiliated. My ex has been calling and texting me every day for the past two days. My sister has been offering me support, but I just don't know what to do next. I feel so lost. Despite everything that happened, I still love her. Should I hear my fiance out? Should I tell people the reason the wedding is off? Is there any hope for reconciliation? Now, here are some relevant comments. User 1 asked, was there more than kissing? According to my fiance, no. She kissed the guy, then went straight back to her friends. They were on their way to the next bar when she received my text, telling her that the wedding was off. Then, user 1 made another reply and said, a lot of things could have happened during that time, and I guess after that, you don't have much trust in her. Also, do you think her friends set her up? You're right that the trust is pretty much gone. I don't think that this was set up. From the way our mutual friend described it, it felt like the opportunity presented itself while the rest of the group egged my fiancé on. Then, user 2 said, To me, this just feels like she's not taking full accountability and is willing to put quite a bit of blame on her friends. Yes, they should be cut off. My friends would never have encouraged that scenario. Put me or let me put myself in a situation that could result in that, much less cheer it on and encourage it. They would have dragged my ass from the bar long before it could go that far. People are who they surround themselves with. Are any of them married? I'd be curious how any and all of those bachelorette parties have gone, and if this is a pattern for that group. That friend that came to see you seems to be the only one with morals. I have zero tolerance for cheating. Once that trust is gone, it really doesn't ever fully come back. I couldn't deal with always wondering or questioning her motives. I don't know all of her friend group that well, but to my knowledge, only the friend that came to me and told me what was happening is married. Then user 3 said, I'm curious about what the boundaries were that you mutually set for these parties. What exactly did you two agree to? No strippers or any other kinds of sex workers. No staying out until too late. No getting hammered and no tempting infidelity. Update. Two months later. Didn't think I'd be posting an update after everything that has happened, but a lot of people asked for it. And I feel like writing down some of this stuff might help with putting this all behind me. Not really looking for any advice here, just putting my thoughts out there. As I said in the last post, I called off the wedding. At first, I didn't tell anyone the reason, but as people here pointed out, it was something that I had to do if I wanted to get ahead of this. So I started calling people again and let them know exactly why the wedding was off. It was an effing, humiliating experience having to tell people that my fiancé made out with some other guy while her friends cheered her on, but everyone has been really supportive, especially my parents and my sister. I also called my ex's parents since they helped with some of the expenses of the wedding, and I wanted to let them know that they should try to get their deposits back. To my surprise, my ex's mother picked up the phone. She already knew everything that had happened. Apparently, my ex told them everything. I did ask her some questions just to see how much they knew, and everything seemed to line up with what happened. They didn't try to make me stay with my ex or anything. As for my ex herself, she and I met once to discuss everything. She begged me for a second chance, and even said that she would cut off her friends who enabled her, and suggested that we could go to couples counseling. I told her that I don't want to spend the rest of my life being her warden, making sure that she isn't hanging out with people I don't approve of, and that if we began a marriage already going to couples therapy for something as big as this, then we were already doomed to fail. I also told her that I can't see how I would ever trust her again after she did the exact thing I expressed my concerns about, and that a marriage can't survive without trust. So this is where I am now. I'm single and I think I'm going to stay that way for a while. It still hurts after spending seven years together with this woman, but there's just no trust there anymore. Anyway, I don't think I'm going to post any more updates. As far as I am concerned, I am ready to close this chapter of my life. Here are some more relevant comments. User 1 said, I just don't understand why people don't learn to talk things out. 
That woman is ready to give up her life for you, and you decided to apply the most extreme punishment possible because she drunkenly made out with someone for 30 seconds. A little perspective and a little crime doesn't fit the punishment. Couples counseling at any stage is a good thing, especially as newlyweds. I am not doing this to punish her. In fact, I don't harbor any ill feelings. I just don't have any more trust for her after what has happened. I expressed my concerns and she still betrayed my trust. I understand that counseling is a good thing for newlywed couples, but I don't want to start a marriage on such a weak foundation. I wonder how the maid of honor feels now. While your girlfriend made the choice while being drunk, the maid of honor definitely played a part in it. Like your party? I've been to plenty of bachelor parties where no temptations of any kind were present. Just a bunch of guys hanging out together. No one made jokes about why the groom isn't doing something for his last moments of freedom. No one pushed him to do or say anything weird that would be out of line for him, etc. In other words, those parties I went to had a bunch of guys who respected the way that bachelors wanted to have his party, and everyone still had a great time. So while your ex did make her choices, that maid of honor hopefully is either consoling her or booted out of her life. The maid of honor contacted me once in the early days after everything blew up. She was begging me to take my ex back, and I said that her friendship was in danger. From the one conversation I had with my ex, she has been cut off. All right, y'all, so I feel like the general consensus around these parts and this channel and this community and these comments and these videos, in my opinions, <gasps> is that cheating is bad. All right, we don't really seem to support it here. We don't really seem to get a lot of comments of people thinking otherwise, but I'm curious what you guys think about that one comment that we read just a moment ago about the person who was like, it was just a kiss, it was a 30 second mistake, she didn't sleep with him, she was drunk. Do you guys agree with that? Or do you think OP went too far? Do you think uh, the commenter was right? Do you think the commenter was wrong? Do you find that like kissing is too far for you? Like, I'm curious what your guys' thoughts are on not cheating, but the comment. I'm actually, we usually don't talk about the comments as much, but I'm curious what you guys think about that comment. But anyway, next story, yay! Story number three, getting annoyed at my dom in the bedroom. Using my throwaway account because my husband is in this subreddit. A few years back, I, F30, developed a degrading kink, and for the longest time, I literally would not get off unless I was being degraded by my partners. It was nothing extreme and still isn't. I met my current husband, M34, a few years ago, and we've had a great life in the bedroom. He's always respected my boundaries, and we do aftercare. He treats me really well outside the bedroom, princess treatment style. So I'm just going to say it straight up, recently I've been getting more and more annoyed in the bedroom because our real life dynamic is completely different than our bedroom dynamic. And I mean it's literally the opposite. I'm the breadwinner. I make 10x more than him, whereas he doesn't have a job at the moment. I put food on the table, pay our rent, own a company of over 100 employees. I look after our kid, I do the housework, I carry out our entire life financially and domestically. I'm not sure how it is for others in this community, but I've started to get more and more irritated at him calling me a stupid S word and a dumb B word and a worthless W word, you all get the point, in the bedroom when he literally wouldn't be able to survive without me and my income and my labor. Like, no, honey, I'm not a dumb S word. You literally won't have a roof if I wasn't here. I pay for our trips, business class fares, and literally support our entire lifestyles. I'm sorry, I'm just a bit worked up after a long session of being degraded. It never used to bother me previously. In fact, I used to feel a relief because the entire day I run my company and have a hundred plus people relying on me for decisions and income. I never get a break at work and I am always needed at something or some meeting or need to make a decision. Letting go of control in the bedroom used to feel like a relief. I'm not sure what has changed. Maybe I've progressed a lot financially and feel a disconnect from my husband who doesn't work and relies on me. Just to clarify, I still love being submissive in the bedroom. Could it be that I'm submitting to the wrong person now because I've simply outgrown him? I'm curious what other dom-sub relationships are like. If your dom isn't a provider in real life, how do you feel about it? Does it ever annoy you? Update. Many people suggested I have a talk with him, and so I did. I told him I feel like he's starting to mean all the degrading things he's calling me and that I'm feeling resentful about it. I asked him to reassure me that he doesn't actually think low of me, that he doesn't actually think I am worthless or stupid or dumb or pathetic. He looked straight at me and said he means it and has always meant it. For me personally, being degraded in bed is okay, but your husband of seven years actually thinking you're a worthless human being when you've been working 12 hours a day to support your family and child 
hurts at another level. I asked him if he's serious, and he said he is. He said only a worthless woman would allow a man to degrade her in bed, and that I had a degrading kink before I met him, so he doesn't know how many other men I've allowed to degrade me. He genuinely seems confused at my reaction, and asked why I think he degrades me in bed if he didn't mean it. I said it's simply a play in bed, it doesn't have to be carried outside the bedroom. I don't know about other dom and sub relationships, but for me it's very important to feel appreciated and cared for outside the bedroom. I can't have any degrading in real life. I lost my mind at this point and screamed at him. I had to let out everything starting with the fact that I'm so exhausted and unappreciated and he's extremely lazy and does nothing all day. One thing led to another and I told him I want a divorce. I feel like I don't know this man anymore. He's not the same caring person I met years ago who would do anything to make me happy and spoil me. I can't believe I was blind all these years. It's making me doubt everything I knew about the world. We've had talks about our dom-sub relationship dynamic multiple times during our happier years and this has never come up before, since I didn't ever imagine it needed to be said. For some reason, more than anything else, more than the fact that he lost his job and became unproductive, lazy and entitled, what's bothering me is the fact that he said he actually thinks I'm worthless. I'm not sure if my brain is blocking all other emotions, but I'm just hung up over the fact that what I thought was just a dom sub dynamic in the bedroom was something real to him. I guess I just needed to get this off my chest. He moved out yesterday. My mom is here to take care of my child, and I'm just crying in my bedroom right now. Edit. I'm so overwhelmed by all the responses and kind words from everyone. I'm reading every comment and responding. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. You guys reinforced that I'm not crazy for feeling what I'm feeling, and that this isn't how a BDSM relationship is supposed to be. I love how supportive this community is. Thank you. Update. It has been five months. The divorce paperwork is still under process. I was unaware it could take so long, but it has been surprisingly easy legally because he is not contesting anything. My lawyer says it will be another few months before it's finalized. My daughter is safe and happy with me, and he got a job as an admin staff at a bank. Good for him if he's getting his life together. My own company is flourishing. He was miserable for the first two months and begged me almost daily to take him back. Not gonna lie, I was tempted to give in, but thankfully I had a strong support system of friends and family and I stood my ground in the end. I have not seen him for the last three months. I have not been in a dom sub relationship or any relationship since then and don't think I will for a long time. I still love the community and sometimes I crave to explore my kinks again, but I think the time for that will come later when I have healed from how I was treated. I promised to myself that next time I won't accept anything less than a man who loves me unconditionally and is obsessed with me outside the bedroom, regardless of what happens in there. I wish to one day find that kind of safety and love. I am currently seeing a kink-friendly therapist to process everything that happened. I still feel resentful at times, thinking about how I have worked non-stop for the last seven years to build our lives both domestically and financially, only to be told that I'm worthless and a woman who's only made for enjoying degrading. But I am happier than I have ever been in the last few years. Thank you once again to everyone who took the time out to comment. It means more than I can tell you. So, I don't know if we've ever gotten a story like this before. We don't really get many many uh, sex-heavy stories on this channel, and I don't think we've gotten any kink-like heavy stories before either. And good for OP, she's out here being girl boss extraordinaire, 100 plus employees making bank, she's being assertive and controlling out and about, and then when she gets home, she's like, take it away, I don't want to have any more control. And the ex-husband fumbled the bag so hard, he could have been like, a stay-at-home dad, he could have got a job, he could have taken care of his kids more, but he said, no, my wife, who does actually everything, is worthless. What a stupid man. This man is stupid. Chat, ladies and gentlemen, where is this woman? I'll take care of her kids. I don't care. I'll say bad things to her in the bedroom. And then during the aftercare, I will say some nice things to her. This dude is so stupid, bro. This is top 10 fumble bags on this whole channel. Dom, sub, switch, it don't matter. Just don't be stupid. <laughs> Next story. Story number four. Am I the a-hole for not kicking my friends out of my house when my nephews came over? I-26F had this happen yesterday, and so far, my family keeps saying I'm in the wrong. So, I was spending my first Sunday off in weeks planning an outing with my friends. 
but at the last minute, my sister asked if I could babysit my twin nine-year-old nephews, since her mother-in-law was having a medical emergency and they had to go to the hospital. I agreed because I know her mother-in-law has heart issues and she's already had a pacemaker put in. So, I canceled my plans and my brother-in-law brought the kids over. Since some of my friends were already over, they helped me watch my nephews and we did some family-friendly activities like watch Scooby-Doo, order pizza, and play around with my child-safe face paints along with some Mario games. It wasn't the weekend I planned, but it was fun and my nephews and friends enjoyed themselves too. Thankfully, my friends have met the twins before at events I've invited them to, so I didn't think it was an issue that I didn't chase them out of my home the moment the boys were dropped off. When my brother-in-law and sister came later that night to pick up the kids, they were surprised to see my friends there, and my brother-in-law asked if they just came back. I explained that they did not, and that we just made a day of taking care of the kids. They both gave me looks and took the kids home. Me and my friends pulled out the wine and some ice cream and decided to watch horror movies. Midway through, I got a text from my sister demanding to know why I let strangers around her children without letting her know. I told her she dropped the kids on me last minute and she knows the four who had come over today and that two of them live at least an hour away from us, so sending them back would have been rude. My brother-in-law also messaged me saying he felt uncomfortable that I allowed strange women to touch his children. They literally know my friend's husbands and wives. I don't get why they are making a big deal about it, but today I woke up to more messages of how I endangered the kids by having them around strangers and worse, alcohol in the house. We got drunk and posted pictures around midnight, I guess. I don't remember much beyond the Instagram post. Most of our relatives are saying I prioritized my friends over my nephew's safety, and I'm confused as hell. The only one on my side is weirdly my sister's mother-in-law, who turns out never was at the hospital, so I don't even know where my sister and brother-in-law were all day yesterday. I don't know. The twins were dropped off on me last second. My friends are known by the family. We never drank or did anything adult until after the kids went home. Did I seriously screw up here? I'm so confused. Here are some relevant comments. A lot of people asked, have you let people know that your sister and brother-in-law lied about going to the hospital? Not yet. I'm meeting up with my sister's mother-in-law because she says she thinks she knows where they were. OP, what did the brother-in-law mean by let strange women touch his children? My friends helped me with the boys' face paint, and they clung on to them or me sometimes during the day. Then OP went on to reiterate they knew I had friends over. My brother-in-law saw them when he dropped off the twins. Update. So, people wanted an update on what happened after I spoke to my sister's mother-in-law and basically had to force the truth out of my sister and brother-in-law by threatening to call our parents. And well, the reason they wanted me to babysit was extremely stupid. So let me just give you guys a little info on my sister and brother-in-law. Before they had the twins, they were into the swingers scene. After the twins were born, they stopped, or that's what they told everyone. Turns out, once the twins were old enough to be left alone, they would have the mother-in-law babysit while they went off the clubs. She figured it out and refused to babysit anymore, so they moved on to our parents, who also apparently said the same thing. They also threatened to stop helping them pay the mortgage on their house if they didn't start being better parents. So that left me. Apparently, they've used me to watch the twins to go out with couples before, but this time was a last-minute date they had, so they lied about mother-in-law's health. The thing that started all of this was due to one of our aunts seeing them that day with the other couple, and they were afraid of this getting back to me or our parents, who already told them they'd stop helping them with their mortgage if they kept up their swinger lifestyle, while the twins were still little. So, when they saw me posting pictures later that night, they decided to lie and say that I invited people over after I agreed to watch the twins for the week so that they could have a Valentine's child-free week and then spread this through the grapevine. They hoped that people would be too busy being furious at me for being an irresponsible aunt, enough that our aunt would be too busy with the family drama to remember what she saw that day. So yup, this was the BS they pulled on me. My mother-in-law was with me when I told my parents, who are livid that my sister lied to them. My parents are telling the rest of our relatives through family chat what happened. They're gonna talk to my sister and brother-in-law later, so I have no idea how that's gonna go. But yup, my parents are telling the rest of our relatives through family chat what happened. They're gonna talk to my sister and brother-in-law later, so I have no idea how that's gonna go. But yup, apparently they made up this whole lie just to cover up the fact that they went out with another couple and dumped the twins on me for it. So yeah, not the craziest update I've seen here, sorry about that, but I thought I'd let you guys know. 
Edit. I don't care that they are swingers. I'm just annoyed that they lied to me to get me to watch my nephews. And here are some relevant comments. One user asked, OP, are the twins your brother-in-laws? The kids are his. Even without the DNA test, they look like him when he was their age. Wow, so an, an, another kink fetish sex, sex story. Wow, two in a row. Okay, the sister and brother-in-law not only lied, but they like, like, plotted and weaponized the lie and we're trying to be strategical about it and we're being nefarious they were plotting oh god yeah so they're gonna have to pay their mortgage and they're terrible swingers that is not a sentence i ever thought i would say but anyway next story story number five am i the a-hole for wanting my mother-in-law to move out after she kicked out my parents Hi there, I am here to ask for advice and to make my husband see that I am not the a-hole. Here's hoping y'all can see where I'm coming from. I, 45F, live with my children, 12F, 12F, 14M, 15M, my husband, 46M, and my mother-in-law, 65F. My mother-in-law moved back in with us in 2015 after my father-in-law passed because she was financially struggling. My mother-in-law is not easy to live with, and we struggled immensely at the beginning, but after a few years, we found a way to cohabitate. Then recently, three months ago to be exact, my parents, 68F, 68M, their house burned down, and they moved in with us while everything is sorted out with insurance and so on. My boys are sharing a bedroom, as my parents are currently staying in my eldest's bedroom. My mother has done nothing to upset her or disturb her. In fact, my parents' bedroom is on the other side of the house. She doesn't, however, have problems with my father, and always finds a way to hang out with him. A few days ago, while I was away for work, a massive argument argument happened between my mother and mother-in-law. My mother had accused her of trying to seduce my father, and there were some inappropriate texts sent to my father. My father immediately showed it to my mother. My mother had accused her of trying to seduce my father, and there were some inappropriate text messages sent to my father. My father immediately showed it to my mother, and my mom responded as if she was my father to see how far the mother-in-law would go, and well, she went far. My mother then confronted her and the mother-in-law called the police, saying she felt threatened, who then escorted my parents out of the house. This all happened while my husband was at work and the kids at school. The parents went to stay at a hotel and they explained what happened to me over the phone. When I returned, I gave my mother-in-law two weeks to move out. My husband thinks I'm escalating things and that I should forgive his mother's actions because she was lonely and confused. FYI, there was nothing wrong with her. She's in good health. So, am I the a-hole for wanting her to move out of our house and my life? Edit. To answer, my husband has not seen the texts and pictures his mother sent to my father. The only reason he hasn't seen it is because he refused to, but I think I'll have to insist because I need him to really understand how nasty she's been. Also, I wanted to kick her out immediately, but my husband husband begged me to give him two weeks so he could find a place for her, and my parents being the saints that they are, said that I should give him that. My husband has profusely apologized to my parents, but my parents aren't upset with us and only hold my mother-in-law responsible as it was her disgusting actions that led to this. 1. In the pictures she sent my father, my mother-in-law wasn't completely naked. She sent him lingerie pictures with some suggestive poses and accompanied him with lewd texts, which is why my husband isn't especially interested in seeing them. 2. The police asked my parents to leave since my mother-in-law technically lives there. To avoid escalating the situation, my parents decided to leave. The police officers did not file any charges and just left after a chat with everyone involved. There was zero violence and no one got hurt. 3. My mother-in-law moved in with us after she had lost almost everything. Father-in-law died after a long battle with cancer. The medical costs ate up pretty much most of their savings and she had to sell their house. This led her to spiral into a deep depression. My husband was very worried for his mother, and for good reason, as she was in a terrible state at the time. So, we decided to move her in with us. Here are some relevant comments. A lot of users said, don't punish your husband because of this. She will be homeless. I'm not punishing my husband for his mother's actions, and she won't be left homeless, as my husband is looking for an apartment or senior housing for her. Then more users asked, did your parents get back in the house? 
I tried, but my parents refused to come to my house if that woman is there. I got them a real nice Airbnb that's a few minutes away from me. They are not upset with me or my husband, they are just really shocked and disgusted. Then OP replied to a now deleted comment, but it gives more details. You completely made up a totally different situation. My mother-in-law repeatedly tried to get with my father, my father being oblivious, thinking she just wanted to hang out. Never went anywhere alone, so all the hanging out was at the house, and since my father was never engaged with her in any flirtatious manner, my mother-in-law thought it would be best to be bold and direct. So, she sent my father unsolicited, half-naked lingerie pictures of herself with suggestive captions asking him to come visit her at night. My father saw the pictures and texts, and within seconds he yelled for my mother, who was sitting not too far from him. My mother then took over the phone and replied if she was being serious, and how should they hide it with my mother being so close. My mother-in-law suggested they go to a hotel and then meet there. That's when my mother stopped texting and confronted my mother-in-law, who then literally screamed and locked herself in the room while my mother ranted and raved at her. Then mother-in-law calls the police, saying my mother was making her feel unsafe. So the police then confirmed, since my mother-in-law lived there technically, that my parents had to leave. So to keep the peace and not further escalate tensions, my parents left. My mother-in-law has zero health issues. She is in control of all of her faculties. She just hoped my father had no loyalty, no respect or love for his wife and his daughter, but unfortunately for her, my father is a principled and fiercely loyal man. She was just being a C-word. Update. I thought I'd give you all an update since several people have asked for one. My mother-in-law is currently staying in an Airbnb. Since she has no position to buy her own place, my husband and I have decided to buy a two to three bedroom place near us that she can live in. The plan is for her to rent out the second room to her friend who is currently going through a divorce. I haven't spoken to or seen my mother-in-law for three weeks now. My husband goes to see her once or twice a week as she is apparently severely depressed. She's also upset with me for telling my husband's entire family why she's been kicked out of my house, and they are all appalled with her. My husband has also gone off on her a few times for her behavior, and he fully backs me in the decision to ban her from our home. The children know there has been a falling out with their grandmother and me, and I suspect they know why, but they also know they can maintain their own relationship with her without it upsetting me. They miss her and have gone to visit her a few times with their father. There's so much I can say about my mother-in-law, but one thing I can't deny is her love for her grandchildren. My husband still hasn't looked at the messages his mother sent my father, and honestly, I can understand it because I too wouldn't want to see anything sexual involving my mother. As for my husband and I, we are both working on our relationship. Obviously, during this period, our relationship was strained, but we are back on track. My husband has apologized to me several times for not putting his foot down with his mother earlier on this, and he is doing everything he can to mend our marriage. This whole situation has made my parents and my husband's relationship awkward, but we are slowly working on mending it. As for my parents' house, it will take another month or so before they can move back in. It's currently a construction site, and my parents are looking forward to redecorating it. Here are some relevant comments. A lot of users asked OP to elaborate on the house. The house will be in mine and my husband's name. Initially, I wasn't in favor with us buying the house, but my husband and I did work out that it would be cheaper than senior living and it would be a good investment for us. We looked at it and financially, this would be the best option for us. OP, why are you allowing her around your children? Because family? It's not only because we are family, but the fact that she has literally been a third parent to my children. She has spent a lot of time taking care of them, cooking their meals, and sometimes even for me and my husband. She regularly drops them off at school and picks them up. She helps with their homework and regularly helped us run our household. My children are close to her, and they are at that age where they can maintain their own relationship with her without my own interference. OP, do you even like your own parents at all? I love them, and my parents are aware of everything. They have literally spoken to my children saying they don't have to pick sides and to go visit her. Ooh, we got all the naughty stories today. Grandma wanted to get freaky with the wrong man, a married man. No cheating allowed here. Uh-uh, sex is canceled. Get that out of here. But guys, this is the end. Oh, wait, I should give my opinions on the matter. Uh, I feel like OP handled it pretty well. Um, I'm glad that the husband didn't, like, blow up at his wife, uh, OP. Um, you know, he didn't want to see the pictures and messages. I get that. I don't think anyone should force him to see that unless you want to torture the man. But, uh, no, he backed up his wife. I mean, he still loves his mother. That's his mom. But he's like, he, we've seen a lot of stories where this could have gone bad, where he would have been like, how dare you think anything ill of my mother? She could have done nothing wrong. And I get that the mother's alone and she's 
depressed, but she got a little too crazy with it, and she was at their crib for a long time, so I get it. I understand where OP's coming from, and I feel like this is the best possible outcome. She's got her own crib, they're renting it out for money, the grandkids can visit each uh, any grandparent they want, uh, the, the other parents are getting their house back, so yeah. But anyway guys, this is the end of the video. That's it, I'll, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow, the day after at the least. But anyway guys, thanks for watching, bye bye!